Hey everybody, Jeff the Cracker Jack Mechanic here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to do a video today uh, about this 1975 Ironhead Sportster custom build. I'm going to take you for a tour around the bike. I'm going to try and do this video in one shoot without a lot of editing. I'm going to go around, kind of highlight a few of the things that I did to make this one particularly special. A few things I can show you from this side of the bike and I will. We're going to start really at the back here because when I got this frame, the back was actually uh, blow torched, cut off and uh, just behind the, the back of the tank and above the tomahawks on the frame as well. So customer has an ownership for a 1975 Sportster and wanted to put it back to an original swing arm style versus the rigid that it looked like it was destined to have. Fortunately, we were able to reconstruct very close to the stock loop at the back. We changed to the square style swing arm, a later swing arm after 75, say, to get away from the drum brake, uh, cable operated drum brake. Now we're gonna have a disc on that side. I'm gonna go over there and show you that in a little bit. I was able to put a, a newer style solid disc on the rear in this case, I flipped the dish sprocket the other way so we're able to get chain alignment without too much issue. I carry a box of different length spacers. I don't have immediate access to a mill or a lathe. So keeping the spacers allows me to get a pretty good idea on centering wheels and getting uh, chain alignment correct. So something, just a little bit of a tip there if you wanna follow that with me. So, so you can see we've got the mock up here. The frame's not painted when this actually did come it was completely in baskets we had built the motor a number of years ago and knew that it was running but the frame came to us with the rear section cut off which allowed us to kind of move forward in the direction that the customer was was asking for so we so we took some time planned it out made a couple of improvements we chose to use the square style swing arm i'm going to run a disc brake i'll show you that on the other side Running the square style swing arm required the relocation of the bottom shock mount. It was at the rear for the newer style Sportster, say after 80, for lack of a, off the top of my head. The bottom shock mounts were relocated. I made a fixture, pressed these out, and then put a support underneath and went with a nice, uh, nice angle up through the rider who's basically going to be sitting right there and I did some changes to the back to allow to run this fender that's going to happen and we're going to put aluminum struts down the side you'll see that come together a few parts that I'm still working on so this is kind of a mid project update for Ian I've had the bike running last night I was able to start it again run it with this in in this form I've done the complete wiring harness this bike will still retain the function of front and rear brake light switches and it will have fully functioning signals turn indicators if you will so it will retain all of the common features more safe safety related type features of a fully functioning electrical system wiring harness uh, custom build if you will so I've tucked it away you can't see much of it on the other side we're at the mercy right now of some temporary handlebars for fit in which case I've got a close friend and I can throw a link up in the top there I think he's got a YouTube channel as well he actually builds custom bars for Harley's great guys help me out a lot it goes both ways so uh, a few things that were more difficult with this build would be the fact that we are running a right side shifting pattern the earlier sportsters say pre-74 uh, had a right side shifting pattern. This, uh, we're based out of, in Ontario, Canada. In 1975, there was a standards act that required all imported motorcycles to shift on the left side. So Harley had a linkage system that went through the frame to accommodate that shifting on the left side. Created some difficulty for the forward controls. So we're gonna retain this right hand side shift. And I was able to use the motor mounts, uh, uh, make an additional outside motor mount that's well supported. I'll have a shifter here and the foot pegs will be fully uh, functioning. They'll be able to fold up and such. So 
Uh, this side of the bike, anything that really stands out would be the would be this forward, this side of the forward control and my uh, actual exhaust bracket, my exhaust mounting bracket will hold the Sportster pipes in place on their spigots, even without the clamps being tightened, which is kind of a neat feature. Uh, anybody that's owned one of these knows that they do have a tendency to get loose and fall off at the least opportune time. So I took the pipe itself and was able to put a few spot welds inside the pipe, a couple little uh, smaller welds and massage them so that when the clamp does come down, it does actually have something to push against into the cast iron heads so that they will be, again, even more likely to stay fitted properly. So I've tried to eliminate some of the uh, some of the smaller problems that can exist with older motorcycles. So again, we're starting with a 1975 Ironhead Sportster. The frame had been hacked apart. The motor I built a number of years ago. Uh, it's all brand new and fresh right uh, crank up rebuild uh, trude the crank new bearings and such so the, the we knew the engine itself was it was brand new and in good condition we started it in our in a in a mocked up test bed that i've done another video of just to make sure that everything did run fine and that oil and such were returning this gave our customer a little peace of mind that the actual engine itself was there was integrity there that the the motor was fine and then we went forward with the, the rest of the project, which has been a very, uh, a very detailed, all encompassing type thing. And now we're getting to the point where we're finishing off some of the finer details, getting spacers correct, replacing fasteners. At first glance, there's some roughness to it, but there will be a period of riding this bike completely like this, shakedown run, a proper shakedown time period. And then it will be taken apart again to have the bike completely painted and detailed with the final points of fasteners and such like that. So mocked it up last night, had the bike running again, fairly confident that uh, we're, we're gonna wrap this up in the next couple of weeks without too much issue. It's gone on for, for quite an extended period at this point, but I'm pretty, pretty, uh, uh, at this point I'm pretty excited because we are getting very close. So. Anybody that's built bikes before, you you know the whole process, the uh, the love, the hate process of actually building a motorcycle, whether it's for yourself or for a customer, it does become a labor of love. So I have loved this bike a lot. So we'll take a quick look back here. I've got the license plate mount. There is a few improvements I'd like to make to it at this point after watching it run. So nothing out of the ordinary there, just a, a nice side mount plate. I chose not to use it off the axle, uh, put in a gusset here. We've got an LED, an LED brake light, tail light that will come on essentially uh, first click, brake lights on as my front brake lever isn't installed. So this will, Come on with the first switch. Functioning brake light, functioning brake light. So I chose to say the first position, the bike will start and the lights do not come on. The second position, the headlight will come on. And that allows on these old bikes for a little bit of extra hydro going directly to the starter motor which shouldn't be a case because i did elect to maintain the larger uh 12 volt battery that these bikes would have used originally in order to crank that starter without any problems so a few other things that i did do because i actually uh wanted to add some reliability is i did update to a uh solid state regulator rectifier on the end of the generator to take away from the mechanical regulator, the mechanical rectifier. Uh, you'll see that the, uh, you'll see on this side, I've switched the braking is here. We've got a hydraulic master cylinder that'll run the braking to the rear. And I'm making an actual 
caliper mounting bracket that'll allow the caliper to mount up and under brake line. And then I will use a banjo bolt with wires for the pressure switch so that when you use the rear brake or the front brake independently, the brake light will come on in both positions. That's a nice feature. I like to make sure that I can do that. So wiring harness, very, very uh, small. I picked, I've got a few uh, places to pick up 12 volts as it goes along. So I don't have to run as many wires in the wiring harness. So we do have uh, a very minimal harness, but there will be provisions for turn signals. I use what I call the FXR style bracket. I made the upper motor mount and was able to mount the coil here, short spark plug wires to fire things off. And I have the turn signal relay mounted up under there. So it's a little busy under there. It's kind of a, a tie-in point for some of the 12 volt secrets I talked about to pick up and run. Uh, I also do that back here off the switch as well. I, I also do that back here off the switch. This is all custom um, wiring back in here. I'll take you for a little visit of that close up. Here, I'll take the... So what you're seeing back here is my actual switch. I've got a 30 amp breaker and I've got the starter relay and I tied some ground wiring into this. I made an extra bracket so that it was visible. It's still rubber mounted. The oil, uh, rather the battery box maintains its rubber mounting. I cut a bracket off here that originally would have mounted, I believe the regulator, the mechanical style regulator rectifier was separate, but at any rate, um, that was some of the custom work that was done in there. And you can see the spout, the spigot that the linkage would have ran across and they had some real long, unattractive brake arm that would have went along here and that would have been where you would shift. You would shift here originally. Now we've got it with the left side brake which early sportsters had any a, at any rate, and we'll have a functioning uh, hydraulic brake system all the way back. And again, like I said, I'm gonna take this master, rather this caliper will be mounted up, tucked up under nice like that. Make it a bracket out of aluminum as uh, after a few things like that. So a lot of time and effort was spent making these pieces one off the front end going to add some support to this as it turns out because it shakes a little bit more than i had anticipated when the bike is running got a little wider than stock tire chain next and a few things like that so yeah got to do all that stuff like they do, do all right. that you stuff gotta, like they do right you got if you like this video smash you like this that video, subscribe button down, down on the left hand side there hit the bell so that you get notifications when they become available